Hey folks, in this episode I caught up with Julie Peasley. Julie is a graphic designer and digital illustrator and created this visualisation uh, for Visual Capitalist competition. Julie took second place with this viz. I was really interested in how it all came about. So I caught up with Julie and this is what happened next. I was listening to a Virtual Capitalist uh, conference and I heard that you like to print out your data set, have a go before you sort of starting a project, sort of dive into the data that way. Is that what you did with this project as well? I had three submissions to the creator program challenge and I did print out at the beginning and the one that ended up winning second place was the third one. So by then I I was pretty familiar with the resource trade.earth site, which was the, the source. And so I actually didn't print out the this food imports data, but I do have a whole folder full of printouts from the earlier ones. And yeah, it's I really just like sitting with it like in a in a comfortable chair and just kind of like thumbing through it in an analog experience because I feel like I can really like find the story that way rather than staring at a screen, you know, scrolling through a website. But I will say that this resource trade.earth site is very interactive and so it, it didn't really lend itself to pr printing out and I downloaded their Excel sheets and they were just like 60,000 rows, you know, and I'm not that good at Excel. I'm learning, I'm getting better, but yeah, yeah. at that point I just kind of interact, use the site as you're supposed to. And, and that's how I ended up getting the data. I'm just kind of typing it into my illustrator. But that said, yes, at the beginning I did print out a lot and, you know, I'd resort them. Like, is there a story here? let's sort by country, let's sort by value. And in the end, I just decided um, to go with food. Yeah, yeah. So what, what drew you into food in particular? So the resource uh, earth site has all the agricultural commodities. Well, it has all the natural resources that are traded internationally. At the beginning, I had all the resources and it was just like too much. It was just this like, overwhelming amount of info and my mantra I've learned from doing this is keep it simple and I had to just keep reminding myself just keep it simple let's zero in on on one of them and I just yeah. thought well food is is the most basic thing that we can all relate to and I found it just really interesting to see where the food comes from and then I decided, let's just focus on one country. I'll just focus on my country because I go shopping for food and does it match up with what I see in the, the market? And everyone goes shopping for food. Everyone goes to the market. I thought it would be a very friendly, warm, relatable biz. So that's why I chose food. How did the process go for this sort of design evolution? Because it's a beautifully designed biz. Was this like the I, the final design, was that what you started on from the beginning or was there a few experiments along the way? <laughs> Absolutely. It went through many iterations. And this is this is how I always end up working is I, you know, at the creator con, they they talked about do you have, do you think data first and then the visual, or do you work with visual first and then the data? And I have always been the data first and then let that lead me to the visual, which is what was happening here. And so you know, at the earlier iterations, I just couldn't quite nail it down. And as I went through, I realized I really needed to, to highlight the food item itself. And I'll show you in my uh, screenshots of the earlier iterations, you'll see how it just, it needed to have impact. The final one that you see is not what I ever imagined in the beginning. You have any of those visits we could see? Oh, yes very beginning this is just kind of a, a this isn't a viz this is a sketch of all the commodities with icons and i just kind of threw them up there to see what they would look like together and i was still in doing it global with the whole world and it was just i don't know it it, it was just too much so i went to focus on just the us here with this one but I was still not focusing on just food. I was using all the commodities from the site. And I think I was focusing with what is just the biggest. And okay. 
you know, it, it just doesn't have much impact as a, it just looks like a, a grid. And Definitely. I guess early on, I wanted the flags to all be the same size. So that's, that's a start. And then here, I decided to rank them. And you know, it's getting closer. <laughs> Yeah, you can see it coming together definitely. So is this the circle represents the size then instead of the um yeah and the icon is the same size? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And and but your eye just goes to these circles and this wouldn't have been the color, you know. I try and start with grays before you don't add color until the end. It just wasn't quite there. It just didn't have it. And so I thought let's make a uh, kind of a, a time, not a timeline, but just something that's easier to follow. And here they're the icons. I, I guess those circles were too distracting. So this next one, I thought, we'll just keep it simple and focus on the ranking. But it just, it still didn't have it. You know, it just wasn't uh, impactful. So, in this one, I finally realized I needed a gigantic tomato, a gigantic avocado. And that's like, that jumps right out at you. And you're like, ah, wow, tomatoes, strawberries, you know, and, and scroll down meat, uh, canola oil. So here I was like, okay, we finally have it. And you know, the order of them doesn't matter. I just made it a little bit more... Um, artistic and intuitive like there there is a ranking but it's it's not as uh, precise and mathematical I, you know the, the bigger ones are at the top of each category and as you scroll down you know i didn't really pick a certain order for them i just kind of let the des design lead it at that point yeah because you're definitely going to have some gaps if you try and fit all the big ones together there'll be like loads of little like gaps here and there that could be filled with some of these smaller ones but yeah this this yeah. is really predominant you i think even the colors of the like for example the tomato really stands out straight away yeah. catch your eye straight away which is all what you need to do right this is all what you're trying to do uh with yeah. days of the and, and even like the final one i added this little cart hmm. yeah the cart i saw earlier yeah because i wanted it to be like right away this is this is the United States, a food coming in. So, you know, the goal is to have someone understand in as quickly as possible what kind of information they're taking in. So put the card at the top and then just kind of tightened it up aesthetically with color and shape. Yeah. I really like how you've used some of these spaces as well. So like some of these spaces with like the little call outs with a little bit more like um like a takeaway in there, like U.S. is Fiji's biggest uh, import of water. Um, mm -hmm. Are these like some of these techniques you'd use to say, um, so if someone was scrolling on their phone looking at this viz, they would still be able to understand uh, what these data points mean, even if they were, say, half the way through the viz, if you like? Yeah, so that is a really interesting question. And, and this is a new thing for me. It's designing for mobile. And so I think with this, this one, I think that they would still halfway down um, know what they were looking at because I just try and keep it simple. Like just where does the US import its food from? And I think as they get lower, they'll, you know, it's a long scroll, that's for sure. <laughs> and it was, you know, designing for mobile is, it's kind of a fun challenge because it's so vertical yet you, you don't want to lose your viewer halfway down, but I think um, I just kept it consistent and simple. So I think it, it works in that way. The one thing I love about this is always like the, the images, the icons you've used for the um, for different like fruits and vegetables. Um, what I generally struggle with is actually trying to find consistent images here mm -hmm. and there. Mm -hmm. How have you done it in this case? Are you one of these people that has like a huge artistic background and you draw these no problem or... <laughs> do you have like a bank of images somewhere that you're drawing upon? 
Uh, the second, I have a stock photo subscription. Uh, <laughs> nice. No way did I draw all of these. I, I don't think, even if I wanted to, I don't think I could. Um, so yeah, that is a, that's a great question because that is a challenge that I come up across, come up against, which is I will download all my stock imagery and then it's just inconsistent and it just doesn't look good together. So I think to answer it, that it's just a matter of grabbing as much as you can and I, I put it into the layout and I see how they look together and I just kind of eliminate ones that don't fit and then sometimes I'll adjust them a little bit but sometimes it's just a it's just a hunt and I just have to keep looking is there anything else you're working on at the moment that we should keep an eye out for um I'm always working on tons of stuff uh at the moment I'm working on a submission for the Information Plus conference. I don't know if you've heard of that. It's in Edinburgh in November. It's a data viz conference, and they're taking submissions for presentations, workshops, or exhibitions. And I'm submitting an idea for an exhibition on visualizing a billion, like tangibly, something that you can hold in your hand. And so I got these, these little balls little foam balls from Amazon and I'm going to figure out some way this is 80,000 in this bag. Yep. And so to make a billion, you would need 12,500 of these bags and they're $12 each. So that's about $162,000, which I don't have. So I can't order 12,000 of these. So I'm working out some kind of exhibition that will simulate it. And that's going to be my submission. So we'll see. <laughs> I really enjoyed catching up with Julie. And here were some of my takeaways. Make your work relatable. Julie said she was thinking about what topics should she do. She picked this one because everybody goes food shopping. Uh, so everyone's going to have the same experience. And in that, Julie was able to find something she was interested in and then show that to everyone else. And it's the same. If you're interested in something, slightly other people are too. Uh, be prepared for a few design iterations. As we saw with Julie's like behind the scenes, the first visualization looked very different from what the end product ended up being. Be prepared to work through this, but set on something in the end that makes you happy. And lastly, build for the platform. This was a mobile competition. What ended up was a quite a long visualization. But what Julie's done here is added in all these little extra notes here to keep that user on track, depending on how far they've scrolled down their phone. Really interested to see how that Visualizing a Billion project goes and what Julie's got coming up next. So check out all those links in the description below and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.